Good afternoon, everyone. If you're in the USA or Canada, good evening if you're in Europe. And welcome back to the Yokaman Research Channel for a new video today called Lancelot and the Puffin, the Humper is Confirmed. What a title, what a program. But uh, Lancelot and the Puffin will lead to the hump, you'll see that. As you can see in this first picture, uh, that's a card game from traditional, I don't know if European, but definitely French. We love playing cards, I uh, got lots of games. And I, 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 I never realized, though I, that I had that, that jack in my hand, that it was Lancelot. Uh, I knew the kings represented kings from Europe. Uh, we have Charles and the queens, also famous queens, but I didn't know uh, the jack, because Valle is a jack in American deck of cards, and I didn't know it was Lancelot. And I tried to look for symbolic in it, but nothing related to our research so far. Interesting. And on the right hand side, we have a puffin. And I didn't know what a puffin was three weeks ago. And I didn't know how you grew cabbage three months ago. You're learning so many things. <laughs> I hope you're learning also in the channel and you're enjoying it. Yes, it was a puffin. And I thank you so much, everybody who commented first reaction. Yeah, I see a puffin on the video three weeks ago when we first discover a bird was hidden in one of the painting of the Rochefoucauld Grail, that it was a puffin, and I didn't know the puffin, I knew the name, uh, I didn't know what it looked like, and I am not 100% convinced it is a puffin, and I'm going to show you why. As usual, I'm going to use a fair use on YouTube, because I'm going to use material that I don't own for research purposes. And from your comments, it was Tracy Crombie, and thank you so much, Tracy, that um, light a bulb in my brain <laughs> so empty you can put bulbs in it uh hi olivia a few thoughts message uh first part but the second part was very interesting also one of the suggestions for the bird is the puffin so i'm wondering about the migration of puffins around north atlantic do they follow a similar route for example uh, i think they occur on most of the land masses mentioned that's very smart and bright tracy thank you because yeah the next day i searched for puffins um migration routes and now i'm becoming an expert in miniatures from the 13th century and puffin migration routes according to which island or where they departed from let's go back one step that was the the miniature the little painting on one of the four manuscripts of Rochefoucauld's Grail, probably, I can't remember, I think this one is in the British Library. And the video that was shot uh, three weeks ago named The Incredible Journey Across the Atlantic. Uh, you have to watch this if you haven't yet, because that's an incredible one. And it's going to be backed up here by what, by what we're going to see. So yes, the bird, as you can see, was in that area here. And uh, I made a little quiz. Some of you found it out, some of you didn't, but here it is, right? That's, that's the little bird we're talking about. And that's the bird zoomed. You can see his eye definitely here and the beak there. That's how I spotted, I spotted an eye looking at me. And that's a real picture. It's pretty similar. You have two features that are very interesting in this bird is the beak that's got stripes and different colors as they show here and different colors though they didn't color it and the eye has got that very particular um i don't know how to call it it looks like a v shape and uh that's what's represented on the right hand side here very very interesting and a and a big long belly that's also represented there with a, a change of color probably this area so they, they made a good job i think representing it um i don't know if i mentioned it but I, i'm always amazed by how how modern those pictures are they're they're 900 years old almost a thousand i can't read the text but we can read the pictures that's that's beautiful that's another picture that's the front page picture of this video of a puffin i'm starting to fall in love with those the the word in french for my french viewers i know there's a couple that i'm speaking uh, thinking of Francois, uh, 
Chico and a couple other. By the way, I'm still late on the mail. I got to reply to you. I'm sorry. Uh, it's called the macaru in French. Yeah, I, I knew the word, but I didn't know what it was. Very interesting. So let's see about the migration. As we learned how to decode this journey journal or picture of the journey, we knew the first stretch is from France. And I'm still in doubting it could be from Denmark. And the incredible thing is all I'm going to show you works for Denmark too. This is from the webpage ResearchGate, example of migration routes of Atlantic puffins from six colonies. Yes, that's what I did last week, <laughs> study puffin migration routes. And you can see there is a definite uh, concentration around England. And that could corroborate uh, the first stretch. The second stretch is from, I suspect, Scotland to Iceland, probably making a stopover at the Faroe Islands, which are famous for puffins, because it's another one of their um, spots for traveling. Interesting, huh? The blue is the way to, and the red is as, as way back as I understood them, but it's not clear. They call it the start and the end, but I'm not sure what they refer to on the website. If you want to have a look, I'll put the uh, URL in the, uh, in the description. But that's a very interesting... Uh, route from England, they seem to go to the Faroe for sure, and uh, they can reach all that area in uh, near Iceland, kind of like the, ru the route we're, we're, we're following. And this one's beautiful along, you remember Greenland with the strong current that's pushing you? And this, these are the models. <laughs> it's in, it, they, they could call this the Puffin route, right? The Puffin Highway, because either from north of Iceland, taking the super highway current, or from the back and going straight through. They fly over land, they don't care, but definitely that's the puffin route. So that's the summary of the journey that is described in this picture. And on the right hand side, you can see the different journeys of migration of the puffin, the, the, the Atlantic puffin. So I was thinking the other day, now, this brings down to, yeah, to three theories. Uh, let me wind back. Uh, I don't have a, yeah, here. I got three theories now. Three, it's, it's either or, this picture. Option one, it, it is an <laughs> um, ornithological book, a book that deals with bird and the Rochefoucauld Grail is a, de is a book that, that tells about stories of birds and how they migrate and that's all and that's what it is, which I don't believe. Uh, the second hypothesis is that <laughs> puffins can read those books and it represents what puffins do. And I don't believe in that too. The third one, and that's what I believe, is that, again, this picture shows a journey and it's using the puffin as a... a confirmation or indication or hint that it, it, it they followed the same route as this bird follows. And they probably made stopovers at the same place the birds make stopover. So very interesting. And, and this last route, this one, yeah, you can see it, it lands right where we want it to land. And then it's just going to Oak Island this way because Oak Island is right here, right? Right here. So yeah, interesting. <laughs> Love those puffins. Follow the puffin. Okay, another thing. The little white dog. You remember the little white dog that I think describes Greenland on their journey? I found this little uh, white dog in other pictures. This one, for instance, still from the same manuscripts, uh, both from the English version, I believe. And that little dog is very similar to the first one on the left. It's not having the exact same stance. And here on this right hand side picture, we only have two people again using their hands for something. Are they again talking about some journey? There's no crown, so there's no boat. I don't know yet. I, I still haven't understood much about this picture and if there's anything hidden in it. But interesting. 
And there's a third one. Again, it's two people talking and showing their hands. But the dog is not white anymore. It's got black stains, the little dog. So it could be, you know, this is different dogs and different stories and they got nothing to do one with the other. But what I saw and what I believe is if you look at the black shapes, one, two, three, four of them, one, two, three, and four of them. This, this number one here kind of looks like this one. There's even that, you know, shape there that you can see here. And this one, number two here, looks like this bit or could be all the way too. And this one, number three here, would be this block there. And number four there, I think there's a problem with the, the, the stretch. You know, they didn't have enough room, but I don't think it's Iceland. Maybe it's Iceland. It's either Iceland or Ireland from one or the other. So I, I believe that, again, there's a hint on that little dog about the geography of North Atlantic. And if I take my pen and overlay all the shapes that are proposed, this is what I end up with. So if I centered it on Greenland here, and you can see that little bumpy, it's, it's that part here. It, the it, the, the um, uh, scale doesn't work, right? It's not scaled properly, but the shapes are there. And, and this shape here goes well with the, you even get the curve, the curve of uh, Labrador. Uh, and um, interesting, huh? And I think that's, that's Ireland by the shape of it. I don't think it's Iceland, but they, they couldn't put it where they wanted. It's at the very, very back of the dog. That's how, how so far east they could go. I think that's what it is, but it's subject to interpretation, of course. Interesting. And finally, Lancelot. I, I, I'm getting more and more um, into understanding the whole grail and why four books and uh, we g make a video about it uh, soon. There's some very interesting uh, um, birth uh, certificates about those manuscripts. Where did they come from? How, what was the first one of them all? Who wrote it? Who did he know, that person? And maybe what did he want to represent? I'm not talking about Guy Rochefoucauld. I'm talking about the first books of the Graal cycle. And uh, it's very interesting. I'll make a video about it. In this miniature, which is from the rare set of miniatures we have from the book that was sold at Sotheby, this picture, it's good quality because it's Sotheby who took it. It's part of the, you know, nine, ten pictures we got from that book that was sold for two and a half million pounds. And that's one of them. So it's Lancelot trying to take his own life. Um, I don't remember the story so big it is and why he's trying to do that. And uh, at first you don't see much, but you know me. <laughs> I'm starting to draw lines when I see alignments. And this is what I did. Of course, La Hompe, the lens, is always a candidate uh, taking the tip and uh, putting it vertically. And what you can see is that at the bottom here, it hits that. Is it is it a stain? Let me go back. Is it a stain of blood or is it a star marker? And I think it's it's. I don't know actually what it is, but what's interesting is the lens hits right into that point when you take the tip of the lens here, the very tip. And the second line that's obvious, not maybe not obvious, but it works, is you see that angle here on that shield? And then I make it go exactly through the uh, uh, entry point of the sword into the leg of Lancelot, and it's aligned again with that stain or that mark here. Let's let me do it reverse. I use this line here. You can see a black line with this angle, and it's perfectly aligned with this here, this line here. 
on the top of the shield. That's the same angle. It's it's the same line, and it hits right into here. Uh, that was starting to be interesting. And then of course I got a sword, and I've got a sword with an axis, right? Do it again. I'm using the line they're providing here, that line, and I'm using this as my baseline. And of course it hits the wound, the wound point, the hit point. And the last one, which I found interesting, is I took the eye of this gentleman on the right, and I noticed that there's a 90 degree intersection with that line, and it hits exactly at the tip of this shield and the arm and everything. So I found it interesting, that line. And then I take, took a step back and I looked at this. And I said to myself, I know this figure. I know this figure because I've seen it before somewhere else. I've seen it here. This is dot to dots Michael's work about the overlay of Rochefoucauld map, Zina Halpern's map, onto the island with the proper scale and proper orientation. And you see Nolan's Cross here, right? And that's the red line is the Ver line. The Ver line goes through the V, it's east-west, and it goes right into the middle of Round Island, westward. And by the work Michael and I provided, we located the position of the hump, which is that device that lets or let not water enter the vault and you can block the upflow entry of water and the same line cone hump is aligned with the triangle of peter and the oak entrance as per the vault theory and the awesome work from michael so i was mentioning i've seen that mode that i've seen that pattern yes i have it's there it's this one let's see so when i overlay and I'm going to zoom out on purpose. That's the configuration I've got. Okay. And picture format. Let's play with the, let's play with the zoom, with the, sorry, transparency. So that's my map. I took a, a bit of it. It's upside down. And when I overlay, I stretch it out and I overlay. And remember, uh, the proportion are always kept when you manipulate pictures in PowerPoint, as I'm doing. And when you overlay it, let me zoom back in. Yes, that's exactly what it is. That is, if you align, let me use another color for you to, to see better. So if we align here, the, oh, that moved. If we align the uh, lens here, right? That's the east-west line. That's the east-west line, the, the lens here represents the east-west line that hits... Oh, no, sorry, 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 sorry. The east-west line is here. Uh, yes, no, it is, it is. That's the east-west line going to um, Round Island. And it's right there. It hits the hump. And cone A is the place the wound and the hit is. And the place that is described as a star or the wound is where the la hump is located. It's pretty cool. Huh? So I did the opposite. I copied, where is it here? I copied this and I put it, painted it in yellow so you can see better. But I did a copy of that motive, that pattern. And what I did is I took the picture here and did the opposite. Instead of overlaying the picture here, onto the miniature from the Graal. I took what I drew on the miniature of the Graal and overlaid it onto this, keeping the proportions. And look, look how it matches. That's, that's now, that's pretty accurate. That's, we even find accuracy. All the points register very, very well. Exactly here, 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 here. That's the headstone. Yeah. And I don't have... I have this I have the oak entrance line and the triangle, but they're outside, of course, outside of the picture. That doesn't go that far. That's the limit of the picture is the length of the yellow lines. But one, two, three, four, five points registering. 
Ah, you can call it coincidence huh, if you wish, but uh, five points is beyond coincidence, <laughs> especially when they all align. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Huh? That was, if you want to have a look at it, that was uh, Lanslow trying to commit suicide and he's revealing the hump. So again, again, La Rochefoucauld manuscript grailed, which officially and certified, verified to be a 1315 document, 1315, shows in it a full alignment on the Oak Island Nolan Cross, which is a registered and proven geometric shape that you can verify. Adding on top Zina Halpern's map information, that is La Hamp, confirming again the uh, formula description about La Hamp at 522 feet. Although th th it is such an unexpected witness that manuscript because we know it's real it's it's proven it's not a fantasy it's not a hoax and you find in that document which is so reliable somehow that documents like Zina Halpern map which are said not to be that reliable though I don't believe I think they are that's exactly it and it would tend to show that the People in 1315 who ordered that book or who made it from my research, there's only four picture drawers in the team, only four individuals. You don't have to put that many people into the secret. I don't know the, the process. I don't know how it happened. But that's too many coincidences, video after video, you must admit that there's something in those manuscripts. Yeah, thank you. Take care. Don't hesitate to comment. Always a pleasure to do those videos. And um, uh, uh, there's more. There's so many. There's so much more. Uh, I'll catch you later. I'll catch you up later. Take care. Tons of love. Bye bye.